Welcome to Laptop Power, episode 41, Pairs versus Singles Results. So this is a follow-up to the previous video, which was Pairs versus Singles Testing, where I showed you how I tested the pairs versus the singles. Now before I launch into that, I'll just run through some of the um, weaknesses of the testing that I did. First up, I had a very small sample size, so that means that these results you can't take as gospel, but that's a start. The second is, so far I've only done one charge-discharge cycle with the separated pairs. I can carry on and do a few more of those, but I thought I would give you these results uh, as quickly as possible. And the other potential problem could be my um, measurement accuracy, given that I'm using a fairly cheap discharger. The next thing I need to do is just reiterate what my goal is for this whole process, and that is to answer the question, is splitting the 18 and 650s into singles worth the extra time in charging and discharging? And uh, am I missing out on good cells? And am I keeping bad or weak cells by keeping, by keeping things in their pairs? Here are the results from the eight pairs of cells that I started off with. The first pair in the data here are the red pair, which were, um, I'd already tried charging as a pair, and they had failed to finish charging. So I already knew they were bad, but I thought it was worth including them in this test. And so what we're seeing is initially an, an okay voltage, then in, during the charging, after eight hours, they never finished charging, but they got warm. The, the, a week later, after charging, they had dropped down to 3.96 volts, which isn't too good. It's pretty bad. The inter interestingly, the internal resistance was not too bad. They were failing even in the presence of a fairly good internal resistance. That's interesting. And the capacity was pretty crap. It's a pair of cells that were only 2,240 milliamp hours. In my normal process, I'd throw those out. After splitting them up, the voltage was 3.74. Oh, the capacity measurement discharges the cells down to 3 volts, I think. And um, then I separated them, and the voltage... Uh, jumps back up, which happens normally. So then I tried charging each of the two cells, and once again, both of them wouldn't finish charging, even after eight hours. The voltage was not too bad, though. Um, after running them for eight hours on the charger, the voltage was kind of fine. Um, the internal resistance was okay, was fine. And the capacity was pretty crap. Um, anything around a thousand milliamp hours um, is pretty crap as far as I'm concerned. So I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't have used those. Um, interestingly, the divergence between the two cells in that pair, between this one and this one, was 21%. So that's quite a high divergence. Um, so potentially that fits in with the general argument that if you've got a pair with one cell that is dragging the other one down, then um, it's bad all over. And that seems to be the case. It could just be that these are pretty old as well. It's hard to know whether the divergence is what caused the low capacity or the end of their age, end of their life exacerbated any minor differences. So it's hard, hard to know what the cause and effect is. The other interesting thing is the, the sum of these is quite a bit lower than the original capacity. It diverges by 10%. So that's interesting. We, somehow we seem to have lost 10% capacity. 
And that could be my my um, lousy methodology with my testing. Not sure. So then the next up was the orange pair. And we had um, initially when they were pulled straight out of the laptop, they were 2.2 volts. They charged fine. A week later they were 4.16 volts, which is also fine. The internal resistance is quite nice. And the capacity measured was quite nice as well. So um, if I hadn't split these up, I would have put those in the pack and been quite happy. But uh, moving on, so I split them up and measured the volts and they were down to 3.44, which is kind of, kind of interesting, lower than these crappy cells. They both charged up quite happily. The charged volts was fine, tiny bit of divergence there. That could just be variation in my equipment. The internal resistance is kind of okay. It's not my best, but it's not my worst. And the capacities are quite nice. The divergence between these two capacities is only 1.8%, um, so not very much at all. And when you add these two together, you get um, less than 1% off from the original capacity. So, um, all over, those look great, and I originally thought they were great. So the story there for me is that um, I would have used these in the battery as a pair, and it turns out um, that they, if, if I was someone who was doing the singles process, they would have both been quite happy as well. Then moving on to the green pair, they start, came straight out of the laptop at 3.7 volts. They sagged a little bit after a week, so the voltage is kind of meh, um, so so. The internal resistance is okay, and the capacity is um, meh, borderline. Borderline, I may, that's kind of on the edge of what I may or may not use. So that makes this an interesting, um, an interesting test case for, for this, um, this test here. Coming off the discharge, they were 3.75 volts. And they did charge up separately quite happily. The voltage after the charge was... 4.07, which isn't that good compared to this lovely pack here. It's kind of, it's lost a bit already. Um, and the internal resistance is quite high um, per single cell. So that's kind of interesting. And the capacities are not that flash. When you, there's, there's a divergence between these two cells, these two cells of 8%, which um, seems quite high to me and the, the divergence between these two when you add those up and this number here the capacity of them as a pair is 43% out which is bizarre uh, what that is kind of saying is that when they was, these were together they were kind of okay and when they were separated, they were crap. And I don't have any decent explanation for that result. That I find really bizarre. I would love to hear any opinions on what might have gone on there. After I've done this whole process, I'm going to redo do more charging, discharging cycles on all these to see if there's any kind of trend after three cycles, complete cycles. Of, that will be interesting. All right, then moving on to the blue cells. They came out of the battery at 2.5 volts. They charged up quite happily. They, a week later, they were at 4.08 volts, which is, eh, is okay, but it's not as nice as, as that, as the orange cells. The internal resistance is okay. The capacity is not that flash, and that's also a borderline case for me. I might 
put those in a pack if I was really desperate, but I'd prefer not to. After splitting them up, the voltages were 3.5 volts each. They both charged up quite happily. The voltage afterwards was kind of okay, but not great, not as nice as those. And the internal resistance is okay. And the capacity is uh, not that flash. I'm... I might use it, those if I was desperate. Uh, and the divergence between those these two cells capacity-wise is 4.25%. So, that's alright. And the divergence between these two added together and the original capacity of the pair is only 3.3%. So, that's fine. Moving on to the violet pair, they started out at 2 volts, they charged up quite happily, the voltage after a week was 4.15, which is quite good, and the internal resistance is alright, the capacity is great, uh, 4882 milliampere for the pair, that's quite nice, thank you very much. And the volts after separating, so they've been discharged and then separated, then the volts is 3.5. I'm tempted, I'm tempted to find a correlation between the high voltage after discharge, meaning poor cells, and the low voltage, meaning good cells. They, they um, hold their, whatever their voltage is, better than the weak, weak cells. Um, although this weak cell under, undermines that theory. Anyway, um, they both charged up quite happily. Um, the voltage after charging is okay. It's not quite as nice as those, but still okay. The internal resistance is okay, and the capacity is quite nice. Almost, almost uh, two and a half thousand milliampere each. So, uh, and the divergence is re is minimal, zero point three percent, and the divergence between both of those added together and the original is only zero point seven percent. So that's a really consistent result. Interesting. All right, the grey pair were 3.6 volts straight out of the laptop. They charged up quite happily. A week later, they were 4.10 volts, which is not as nice as these ones, but um, possibly okay. Um, internal resistance is great. Uh, lowest of all of them, actually. Capacity, whoa! is 5,000 milliamp hours. Oh, that's great. Um, interesting that that's the lowest internal resistance and the highest capacity. Um, small data set, but even so. And then I separated them and they measured 3.27 volts, which does fit my theory that the lower the separated volts after discharge, the better they, the better the cells. Interesting. Uh, they charge quite happily after charging the voltage was only 4.10 again, which is interesting. It's the same number as there. Um, still not as nice as those. Um, internal resistance is fine and the capacity is lovely. Two and a half thousand. Happy with that. And there's very little divergence between those two and very little divergence between those two added together and the original capacity of the pair. So, that's quite nice. And then the last pink pair, they initially started out at 1.7 volts straight out of the laptop and they charged up quite happily. 
their voltage after a week was quite nice and the internal resistance is fine, the capacity is good then I separated them, then the voltage is much higher than these and higher than this pair here so I'm not sure about my theory on voltage after discharge the, they charged up, each cell charged up quite happily the voltage was lovely 4.17 that's nice the internal resistance was fine and the capacity is okay um, I'd certainly use those not as nice as those but still quite usable and the divergence is pretty small 2.5% and the divergence between those and the original pair is pretty small 4.1% and then the purple cells, they are a complete washout. Um, they started out at zero volts. I did everything I could to try and charge the pair without any success. So couldn't test the internal resistance, couldn't get any capacity readings. Separated them, they still did as a doornail. No, they didn't charge. Um, complete wipeout. Um, so uh, I would have thrown those out. Uh, when I got to the fact that they never charged. Um, so these middle six are the ones that I would have moved forward with and these two here I would have put in my um, only use if I'm desperate pile and these other ones I would have used. And when you go along to the um, results for the individual cells it's pretty much the same story definitely use those definitely use those I definitely use those and those and these only if I was desperate uh, so these are, are probably the most interesting set of results in terms of answering the question is it worth the hassle of separating them because when I look at those, I don't see enough benefit from the palaver of having to charge and discharge twice as many cells. Um, I don't see the benefit in separating the cells. So my conclusion from this small little test, this small data set, is that Pairs are still the best way to go. Uh, you may read different things into that data and I'm going to keep going and keep charging and discharging these, all these cells another couple of times so that I get three full cycles of the separate cells and see if these numbers start to vary or drift at all um, I would love to hear what you think this all means uh, it's quite possible you'll come to different conclusions down in the comments and um, thanks for watching catch you next time cheers